Guys, this is it. Today is a day that we paint. And I'm really excited about it because the quality of the bodywork gets revealed by the paint job. Because once the paint is down, that's when you can really see how well you did on your bodywork. And a black paint is unforgiving, so it will show every single flaw. But I wanted to make things a bit more interesting. So normally, whenever I paint, I use high-end professional paint guns. And I know whenever I use those guns, I can always get a great finish. But I've been wondering, can I get the same type of a finish if I use a cheap Chinese paint gun? So I decided I'm gonna run out to my local Harbor Freight store that sells a bunch of cheap Chinese tools and I'll see if I can pick up a couple of cheapest paint guns and then I'll see what sort of results I'm gonna get with them. So here are the three cheapest guns that Harbor Freight offers. And they go for $29.99, $15.99 and $74.99. Now, to keep this comparison fair, I'm going to compare the $29.99 and $74.99 guns. And the reason why is both of them are HVLP, which is high volume, low pressure. And this gun in the middle, the one for $16, is not an HVLP, so I will not use it. Just to keep it fair, this more expensive one comes with an air pressure regulator, which we're not going to use because I'm sure this thing is complete and utter garbage. So if you look at the boxes, one box got no regulator, the other one's got a regulator. And yeah. So this is the one for the ground. And also this gun goes in a basket. And also if you guys are going to run a Harbor Freight air regulator, Go ahead and grab this one. I've actually uh, bought this regulator about a month or two ago, and uh, so far, I really like it. I'll say it's much better than the rest of these regulators. And plus, this thing is very inexpensive as well. Let's start off with a cheaper gun. We got the cup, the air pressure regulator, some tools, some reading material that we won't need. And the actual gun. All right. And in here we got the cup, the gun itself. So since both of these guns are made by the same company, it looks that the uh, cups are identical. I'm pretty sure that fit and finish is going to be a little nicer in this gun versus this one. So this one is 1.4 nozzle size. And this one's also 1.4. So I'm really excited actually to put both of these guns to a test and just kind of see how they do and what sort of results we're gonna get with both of them side by side. So normally I would use my Tecna Pro Light for base coat and then for clear, I use my Iwata LPH 400. Both of these are great guns. So I'm really excited to see how these two guys will stack up to these. So to make this comparison fair, I'm gonna use one of the guns to paint the front bumper, the fender, and the front door, and the other gun will be used to spray the back door, the quarter panel, and part of the rear bumper, and then we'll be able to kind of compare the results literally side by side. Due to time constraints on my end, I'm gonna to have to get all of this paint done in two stages. That means I'll be doing the one half on one day and then the other half will get painted on a different day but for you guys it's all gonna be just one video so let's begin first thing we gotta do is we gotta lose as much of this trim as possible so the door handles will have to come off the side mirrors coming off and even some of this trim whatever is gonna be not too difficult to remove I'll go ahead and pop off this way it's out of the way and we'll get a cleaner paint job that way so in order for me to get the door panel mirror and the other trim off first thing I gotta do is I gotta pull off this door panel to get access to all of the bolts that hold the door panel and other stuff in place.
So generally, whenever I'm getting uh, darker colored cars ready for paint, I will use a finer sandpaper like 600 and sometimes even 800, but I don't really use 800 that often. Generally, on lighter colored vehicles, I will use a 400 grit sandpaper because it just makes your sanding much faster because it knocks down that primer that much quicker. But it does leave deeper scratches behind and those scratches may come through later on and you'll see them a lot more on a darker color. So one more thing, when it comes to sanding down the primer, you want to be aware of your body lines. You don't want to send them down because primer does have some thickness to it and you want to treat it just like you would the body filler. So I'm going to do the same thing as I did in the previous video when I was working on this fender. I had to mark and then mask off my body line. So I will do the same thing for the primer in order to keep this body line nice and sharp. Here I'm using a body line gauge that I made a couple of videos back. This way I'll know exactly where my body line should be and now based on the line that I drew I can tape this body line off perfectly without guessing as to where it should be the reason I didn't run tape all the way down is because this body line actually dissipates and it fades out so it just kind of blends in with the panel therefore it's not critical for me to be really precise uh, back in these areas you do want to use plenty of water when you're sanding. Reason being is wet sanding cuts down on sandpaper clogging up. And also you don't have a bunch of dust flying around so you're not breathing it in. If you look at the primer on the door to the right of the fender, it is lighter color than the fender itself. And that's because I've already sanded it down. At this point, I will keep on sanding until all of the darker colored guide coat is gone 100% and all I'm left with is lighter colored primer underneath. So I'm done sanding down all of this primer. Now, the area that's still painted that's adjacent to this hood is not gonna really receive much of the base coat. I'm gonna try to do somewhat of a blend. Even though this is almost pure black color, there's still a little bit of pigment and I wanna keep that transition as seamless as possible. So I'm not gonna go with my base all the way to the edge because I want the edge to still retain some of that original factory finish so it would flow perfectly onto the hood. So pretty much all of the unpainted area that you see here, I'm gonna finish off with some 800 grit paper. So this way later on, as the clear coat and everything dries, you will not see any micro scratches. This 800 grit sandpaper is really gonna smooth this area out. So this way you shouldn't be able to see any sort of flaws or imperfections. All right, now let's go ahead and get everything masked off. So whenever I paint outside, I always make sure that the ground around the area where I'm painting is well saturated with water because water will keep all of the dirt and debris down. And this way, as you're blowing your paint in, the air that comes out of the gun doesn't disturb and pick up all the dirt off the ground. So to spray the front end of the car, I'm going to go ahead and use this uh, purple Harbor Freight gun but that plastic cup is not of very good quality. And I actually ditched the cups from both of my Iwata and Develbis guns. And I use Develbis D-cup system. So they're basically disposable cup liners and they just make painting and cleanup much easier and simpler and faster to do. So that's what I choose to do. And I'll go ahead and use this uh, Develbis adapter on this gun to kind of make my life easier this time around as well. This is the Harbor Freight air pressure regulator and down here is an inline water filter separator. So this way you're gonna get 100% dry air coming out of the regulator. So this is the way the D-cup system works. You got the outer sleeve, you got the measuring gauge that just slides in, then you got the cup that goes in. I'm using matrix sealer. So since the car that we're painting is black, I'm gonna lay down this dark gray, almost black sealer over my primer. This way I don't have to do a bunch of coats of base coat just to cover up all of the gray primer. The mixing ratio of this is four to one. So four parts of MP127, which is what this is, and one part of MA122, which is our activator, also known as hardener. So I'm going to use this far left row and I'm gonna go up to number four. And with activator, I just go up to number five, which is just adding one of the parts. Then we got one lid going in. And this is the ceiling top that screws in and holds everything together. Now, all I got to do is just shake this up. And the last thing is this little filter goes right into the D-cup adapter. Press it in. 
take this little lid out. All right. And it's ready to spray. So let's go ahead and quickly set this gun up. So you got three different knobs. And basically, you want them to be wide open. The bottom one open, the side one, after I open all the way, I bring it back down about maybe quarter of a turn. Next thing you'll do is, let's say that this knob is turned all the way out. Squeeze the trigger and start bringing this knob in until it stops. So right now, you are wide open. Now let's go ahead and hit this test panel and see what happens. I'm going to bring my pressure up to about 26. I'm going to aim at the panel and just squeeze the trigger. All in all, not too bad, but it is a little more dry down toward the bottom than it is toward the top. And I bet you it's just because that's just the way this gun is. This is a wax and grease remover. It's pretty much going to pick up any wax or grease that's left over on the panel. Got to break it down and then you got to wipe it off. The very last step before I start spraying, I got to go over everything once again with a tack cloth. It'll pick up any sort of lint, any small dark particles or any dirt particles like that. So the sealer needs about 10 or 15 minutes to set up. So in the time that it's drying, I cleaned my gun and uh, I will uh, mix up the base coat. Now this particular base coat mixes one to one with reducer. There's no hardener needed. So the first coat is done. I will go ahead and lay down one more coat after about 10 minutes or so of flash time, and then that should do it. So I'm letting the second and last coat of base flash off for about 15 minutes. This is the clear I'm using. I'm not sure how good it is. I just recently bought it, so I guess we'll test it out. And this stuff mixes. 4 to 1, meaning 4 part clear and uh, 1 part hardener activator. Guys, I gotta apologize, it's really getting dark on me. Hope you can still see what's going on. I cannot stop now, I gotta get this finished up. All I got is 2 more coats of clear and we're done and I guess we'll be seeing the results in the morning. So guys, it is the next day and the result is not good, <laughs> actually not good at all. This uh, finish kind of looks like crap. I mean, I've done my best trying to lay this out as best as I could, but orange peel is really heavy. This gun just does not automize good at all. This just does not look like a professional result. As far as painting outside and getting uh, dirt in, I mean, there's little specks, you know, uh, this is just couple of specs here so in the end I'll be able to salvage this I just got to do some cutting and buffing the next step is to get the back door and a quarter panel prepped taped off and painted I will sand this area down with a 400 and then I'm gonna continue out this way with some 800 and then somewhere in this area I will transition to uh, 2000 and then 3000 right about here so the way it goes is I'll have my color back here and then I'm gonna lay down the clear coat up to about here and then I will use a clear coat blender from about here to where this uh, water line is right about now this way I don't have to waste any extra material and time re-clearing this entire bumper all the way to the other side. And I'll do the same thing up here. Instead of running my clear coat all the way to the front of the car, 
I will end my clear blend right about here. I stop with my 800 grit right about here. And actually I think I'll go over this area with 1500 and then 3000. I got this door all torn apart. I've battled with this thing for close to an hour. I'm not really sure what's going on, how to get this thing out. So you know what? I'm just gonna get it taped off and call it a day. I'm done messing with it. So the setup of the gun is the same as before. That actually looks much, much better than, than the first gun. All in all, the fit and finish on this gun feels much better. But once again, fit and finish means nothing if this thing doesn't spray well. So let's go ahead and start laying down some sealer, base coat and clear, and we'll see what the end result will look like. Guys, I gotta apologize, you missed that one last bit of footage because my camera died on me and it was getting late and I was running against the clock to get everything finished up. So I had to just keep going with the camera off. But here it is, this is all done. And let's go ahead and take a look at this finish. So the gun that I used to spray the back was two to three times more expensive than the gun that I used to do the front. So let's go ahead and compare the finish. So this is pretty bad. You see lots and lots of orange peel. Hey, this is better, but there's still quite a bit of orange peel. So you can see the reflection much, much better versus, versus this. And you guys will see some dirt on here. And actually this dirt is not in the paint. This is just fresh dirt and dust that uh, rubs away just fine. And same thing goes for the finish back here. Just look at the reflection of the spokes of the wheels in the truck. You can barely make them out on this door. And with this door, it's quite a bit better. All in all, everything turned out pretty good. There's not really any dirt. There's maybe a couple of small specks like, uh, yeah, a couple of small spots right here. Nothing major. The bumper came out pretty good. There's another little speck of dirt here. And this is kind of where I ended my clear blend. I'm going to have to buff this area out just a little bit to kind of make that transition that much more seamless. So all in all, the verdict is the gun that was used back here was two to three times more expensive. And I would say the quality of the finish is probably about twice as good. But twice as good still doesn't mean that it's a great gun. Because a nice professional gun like the Iwata or a Develbus that I would use would have the finish looking two to three times better than what we got going on. So in the end, if you guys are going to paint something small, you could probably get away with using these cheap Chinese paint guns. But if you're going to take this hobby a little more serious, then you probably want to invest into having some professional paint equipment. Although I ended up with a pretty bad looking finish, there is still ways to make it look perfect. I will show you how to do paint correction in the next video. So stay tuned for that. And in the meanwhile, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll be seeing you guys in the next video very soon.